Uh, just set the scene for where they've been thus far, because it's been a pretty rocky road. Carson, it looks like even a sniff of a possible takeover of Billabong is enough to see the shares spiking more than 10% this morning. We have a look at a 30-day chart of Billabong. This is what it looks like. And you can see just what the shares have done. And we've just seen a massive spike up on the open there. It has been a very tough uh, year for Billabong shares. I mean, this is a 30-day graph and it looks positive in, in light of the 30-day performance. But if I change that to a one-year performance, you can see that the shares have fallen so much through the year. That's because we're seeing two private equity companies walking away from uh, Billabong after doing due diligence. And I guess shareholders are a little bit nervous in what they may have found to be walking away from the deal. But now we have an insider, a board member, the head of the Americas, looking at a possible leveraged buyout. Now, he still does need to get funding and he needs to get this deal together, but it does look like this announcement this morning really behind that spike up that we've seen in the shares, and the shares up by more than 15% at the moment. To find Finance and a whole lot of other conditions just from that perspective uh, you know coming out of the United States what are the debt funding markets looking like well if we have a look at the US it does have much cheaper debt markets than here in Australia so we do see a, a number of our companies usually going offshore for uh, debt funding as well but if we have a look at leveraged buyouts because Billabong is a company with very little debt now um, it, it, it means that the leverage buyout model would work for this company. Mm -hmm. But of course, the key with Billabong in the longer term is a turnaround in its underlying business. And that's really what we want to see come through. So this is a turnaround story. And I guess any buyout of this business would be on the basis that we would see a pretty substantial turnaround in its business in the next few years, and then possibly another refloat or a profitable uh, business in the, in the next couple of years. But of course, the retailers have been an interesting area over the, in the Australian market the last uh, week or so. Mm. We've seen stocks like Maya doing yeah. very well, JB Hi-Fi. Some of those cyclicals also starting to turn up in hopes that perhaps we have seen the cyclical area of the Australian economy um, bottoming out. So it's going to be interesting to see whether those uh, retailers continue their very good performance. We've seen stocks like Premier Investments hitting a 52-week high last week. We've, we're also going to see an update from uh, David Jones on Friday. So that's going to be very closely watched. Well, year, which I can see up by 3.1% at the open today. Uh, the earnings down, Gray, but a, a promise that, or a suggestion that margins will improve from here. What do you make of all of that? We have a look at well, long year. Its earnings are really exposed to the exploration part of the mining cycle. And well, what we've probably seen is a peak in terms of exploration capex. It's a global leader in the production in production rigs as well as the consumables in that area. And it's also the largest provider of drilling services. And if we have a look at this stock, it's been under a lot of pressure. Just over the last three months, we've seen the share price falling by a massive 50%. So there's a lot of concern around this area. The market probably expecting this downgrade and it's pretty much priced in most of this downgrade. Now previously uh, Boat Long you were saying that they do expect their calendar year uh, 2012 earnings to be uh, the revenue to be about two billion dollars and EBITDA to be between 360 to 390 million dollars. Now they've come out to say that they now expect EBITDA to be between 310 to 320 million dollars so that's a downgrade of up to 20 and a half percent. So Boat Long the downgrade coming through, but given that we have seen the shares falling 50 percent over the last three months, I think it was expected by the market. Yeah, um, I think we're on the countdown to six weeks till Christmas, but you're seeing some IPOs coming online before that. Tell us about that. This is important, Brooke, because seeing a lot of IPOs and the size of IPOs is a sign of market strength, and we really haven't seen that throughout 2012. In fact, if we have a look at the biggest IPOs this year, they're relatively small ones. We saw Calibre, which was raising $75 million, and we also saw Armour Energy, which was also raising $75 million. So coming into the end of the year, and it does look like we're going to see a couple of the biggest IPOs for 2012, there will be a lot of other companies to watching watching to see how popular these IPOs are and to get a gauge of market sentiment at the moment. So in the next few weeks we are expecting to see a New Zealand group, the Dairy Farmers, um, Fonterra, as well as the SCA which is the Woolworths property uh, portfolio spin-off coming to market. Now we will be watching Woolworths this week because we could see that IPO uh, coming online as early as in the next couple of weeks. We'll see the shareholder vote on Thursday so we may even see the institutional component of that particular IPO being launched on Thursday. 
Thursday. We're expecting to see $300 million being raised through the institutional book and then $200 million through the retail book. And this is uh, Woolworths' $1.3 billion property portfolio. So that one's going to be an interesting one to watch. The other is a New Zealand company, Fonterra. They're looking at raising $400 million in New Zealand as well as in Australia. But these two look like they are the biggest or some of the biggest for 2012. And no doubt that a lot of other companies are going to be watching to see how these IPOs uh, succeed or fail uh, to see whether we see more of these coming to market early 2013.